This section is fraction arithmetic. We're going to start by adding and subtracting fractions. Now everything in this video, ultimately I only care if you can do it with your calculator, but we are going to talk about how to do it by hand just so you understand the logic behind it. So in this first example, what is one fifth plus two fifths? You'll notice I have two pentagram, pentagons here divided into five pieces each. So we have one fifth here. and two-fifths here. If I was to put those two together, it was that one, this one, this one. So that gave me three out of five. So one-fifth plus two-fifths equals three-fifths. Now my next one, what is four-eighths plus six-eighths? So one, two, three, four. So I'd have four-eighths and one, two, three, four, five, six, six more eights. If I was to try and put those together, I have four of them plus six, and that should give me 10 of these little slices. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10. So we have four over eight plus six over eight gave me, let's see, depending on how you want to look at it, I said I had 10 of those eights, so that's 10 eighths. Or, it look, it was one whole, so one, and then two more eighths, so one and two eighths. And my next example, what is one half plus one third? So we start with one half, and then we have one third, but when I try and add them together, how am I going to do that? I don't really have any way to add them together. So what we could do is we could add a few more lines to make it so they're similar shapes. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so I think I've drawn it fairly evenly. So this one half, if I was to try and transfer this one half down here, it looks like it was taking up one, two, three of these spots. Notice there were six spots, so that was actually three out of six. And this one third up here, it looks like that was taking up two out of the six spots. So we have one, two, three, plus two more, so it looks like it's taking up five out of my six spots. Let's see what that looks like algebraically. So we had one half plus one third, but we don't really know how to do that. So we split it all into six. So now this piece becomes three six. This piece became two six. And together we got five out of six. So we have something called common denominators. Probably the most important thing about fractions is you can only add fractions if they have the same denominator, that same bottom number. If they don't have the same denominator, you have to create an equivalent fraction with the same denominator and then add them together. So that's why up here, when I had one fifth plus two fifths, I could just do, well, the fives are the same, so I just do one plus two is three, so three fifths. Or four eighths plus six eighths, I did four plus six is 10 out of eight. But here, one half and one third, those are different denominators, different bottoms, so I had to change them all into six, which was common, so I could add them together. So let's do each problem by hand and then with our calculator because it is very important to make sure you're getting the right answer on your calculators. So if I have 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths, those are the same denominators, those match. So I just add straight across, so that's going to be 5 out of 7. Now if you're putting these in your calculator and you're getting a decimal but you want a fraction, go back to our unit where we talked about how to change between fractions and decimals and you can review your memory, refresh your memory on which buttons to push in your calculator to switch it back to a fraction. Okay, let's see, 3 sevenths plus 12 sevenths. Again, those match, so all we have to do is add them together. So that's going to be 15 out of seven. Or, depending on your settings, you might have had, that's two holes and one seventh. If you want to learn how to switch these, this is what we call improper fractions versus mixed numbers.
Now, really, in our class, this just doesn't come up and we don't really care about it a lot. So I'm not going to make a video about improper fractions or mixed numbers, but you can certainly look for that on the internet. You'll find lots of videos on YouTube or different sites that try and explain it to you. So let's go this one. 3 eighths plus 1 sixth. Notice these do not match, so we can't add them. So let's try and figure out what this would be. What would 8 and 6 both go into? They would both go into 24. So we'll use 24 as our common denominator. So how do we get from 8 to 24? We have to times by 3. So we'll do 3 over 3 times 3 eighths plus, and now this 1 sixth, we have to get 6 to 24. So we'd have to times it by 4. But if you times the bottom by 4, you have to times the top by 4. Otherwise, you'd be changing your numbers. But if I times it by 4 over 4, 4 over 4 is just 1. And timesing it by 1 doesn't change it. So these are what we mean by equivalent fractions. So you times the 8 by 3 over 3, and you times the 6 one by 4 over 4. So if you do that, then 3 times 3 is going to be 9, and 3 times 8 is 24. Plus, now this 1 6 times 4 over 4, 1 times 4 is 4, 6 times 4 is 24. So now we can add them together and we get 13 over 24. Again, on this point, you don't truly have to be able to do this by hand. You just have to be able to get that answer using your calculator. And let's try this one. 5 over 12 minus 3 over 6. So what would be a common denominator? Well, they both go into 12, so let's use 12 as our common denominator. Let's see, so 5 out of 12, well that's already there, so I don't have to do anything. Minus, and this 3 6. Well to get 6 to 12, we'd have to times by 2, but if we times the bottom by 2, we have to times the top by 2. Let's see, so we'll still have 5 over 12 minus, now 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 times 2 is 12. So 5 6 minus, 5 over 12 minus 6 over 12, 5 minus 6 is negative 1 over 12. Or we would just write it as negative 1 12. So we are going to be adding fractions in this class. We'll also be multiplying fractions. So how do you multiply fractions? So just conceptually, what would be 1 half times 1 fourth? Well, if we look at rectangles and we have 1 fourth, and it's this yellow part, and then we have 1 half, and it's this top blue part, well, what would happen if I try to overlay those and see where they intersect? So if I put the two of them on top of each other, it's kind of like drawing a line here or drawing the four lines here. And where do they intersect? Just this one little spot right here. So one half times one fourth is equal to, looks like I now have eight pieces and they overlap in one, so one eighth. That's just kind of a conceptual explanation, or if you have 3 fourths times 1 half, same thing, we have 3 fourths, 1 half. If you lay them on top, and where do they overlap? They overlap right here with 3 of them out of an 8 total. So to multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators to create a new numerator, and multiply the denominators to create a new denominator. So you just multiply the tops, so A times C, and you multiply the bottoms, so B times D. So let's try this. So multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. So we'll have 4 times 2 over 6 times 8. Or in other words, that would be 8 over 48. Now, if you're trying this on your calculator, it will probably simplify this to 1 out of 6. Either way, I would take either answer. My next one, this one seems slightly harder because that 5 isn't actually a fraction. So how do we make it a fraction? We put it over 1. You can make anything over 1. So let's just rewrite that. 5 over 1 times 3 over 7. So we multiply the top. So this is 5 times 3 over 1 times 7 or 15 out of 7. Your calculator might also write that as a mixed number of 2 and 1 7 and finally, negative one-third times six over five. So let's see, one times six, 
we'll just write this as negative, and then we'll have 1 times 6 over 3 times 5. A negative times a positive is just a negative, that's why I just put the negative here. So we'll have negative 6 over 15. So we just 1 times 6 on top, 3 times 5 on bottom, 6 over 15, or your calculator might simplify it to negative 2 over 5.